Hello, frog. So we've taken a quick stop at Nuclear Lake and collected a little water sample, so we know we're going to have water there. Uh, now we're climbing up a hill, Black Mountain or something, I don't know what it's called exactly, but following the Appalachian Trail. And there's a little mountain creek there, fairly sheltered, so I'm thinking maybe it has water, but in this part of New York, we haven't had a real steady rainstorm for probably three or four weeks. So everything is really dry but maybe we'll find something there all right we're coming upon our creek and we'll see if there's any water in it And unfortunately, no, it is dry as a bone. All right, so unfortunately, our creek was completely dry. So we'll have to wait for another time to get some water out of that. But as you could probably see, it's lush with vegetation. So it should support lots of life. So I think that would be a great place to go back. Well, here's our outlet from Nuclear Lake, and it's got a little water in it. Now we'll take it back to the microscope and hopefully we've got something interesting in there. I'd like to see some protozoans zooming around. So I'll see you back at the scope. These organisms were captured at the north end of Nuclear Lake and I think they are dinoflagellates. I'm not 100% sure I'm really trained as a biochemist, so if anyone has any confirmation or correction, please let me know. Dinoflagellates are probably best known for causing red tides in marine environments, but there are also freshwater dinoflagellates. This little guy is a diatom. I see them a lot in Nuclear Lake. Diatoms are organisms that have silica-containing shells, effectively, a frustule. And these frustules are made up of two halves or two valves that sit on top of each other, very much like the top sits on top of a petri dish. Here we have a dead diatom, and this is most likely of the genus Tabularia. And 
What we have is just the shell or frustule. We don't see any of the insides of the organism because it's gone. The organism is dead. If you like the White Cliffs of Dover, thank the diatoms. And here's one more diatom for you. I have a lot to learn about diatoms, and I'm looking forward to it. And here we have what I believe is a desmid. My guess is that it is a desmid and of the genus Cosmarium. Desmids are quite interesting, and if we look at, into this, what we see is that symmetry characteristic of desmids, but also we see things jumping around inside, and apparently these are crystals of barium salts, and these are moving around via Brownian motion. Interestingly, also, strontium salts can be formed and concentrated in these organisms, and they have been suggested as a use to clean up water that has been contaminated by nuclear accidents. And, oddly enough, this organism comes from Nuclear Lake, and indeed, Nuclear Lake has had a nuclear accident. But it's all coincidence. Now we can drift off to the right from our putative desmid and find an algal colony. This colony, I don't know what it is. It's certainly not the Volvox that is so common, but certainly it's a very interesting colony. And now we see another very interesting colony. It really appears that it's almost two sea urchins on top of each other, but of course it's not sea urchins as they are macroscopic. And this is a microscopic algal colony, most likely. And here we have another desmid, this one of the genus Microsteria. And in this slide, we see the general structures. We see that the desmids consist of a half cell, each containing its own chloroplast. The half cells or sebi cells are separated by the isthmus. And note the little black dots called pyrenoids. And here I've blown out the colors to make a pretty picture and to highlight these pyrenoids, which we see are these circles. Now, these pyrenoids are interesting structures. Their purpose is to concentrate carbon for optimal photosynthesis, which would likely be required in warm, shallow ponds. Ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase oxidase will perform the carbon fixation step of photosynthesis. Now this enzyme can use both carbon dioxide and oxygen. So this organism concentrates carbon inside of the pyrenoids, which are loaded with ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase oxidase, making the carbon fixation more efficient than if it occurred outside of the pyrenoids. And finally, we've got some little drunken dancers. This little guy is spinning around and having a great time. And if you look very closely, you'll see very fine structures radiating out from its body. And these are perpendicular to its membrane. And finally, we've got this little guy doing a slow dance for us. And if we look closely at one end, we see fine, thin structures that appear to be flagella. If we look closely again, we see that there appears to be two flagella. And if we look at the coat of the organism, or what I'll call the coat, we seem to have various plates. And this is consistent with the pellicle of euglenids. So I think we have a euglenid here performing for us. Well, thank you very much for watching the video. If you have any comments, suggestions, questions, please leave them below. I really appreciate all the comments I've received and it's been great to get to know some of you. So I will see you in the future. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.